Hey, Dr. Mothin can do a little with Advent uh, here with our latest edition of Adventing. I'm here with my co-host, Dr. Ethan Handel. How, how you doing? Doing well. Doing well. You got sports back in the uh, the viewfinder these, these days. Right? Yes, we do. And, yes, we do. And there, have you watched any baseball? You know, any? we were my wife Stephanie and my, my myself were watching baseball last night, and she's like. What are those cutouts behind the mound? She's like, this is really strange. She like went and Googled it, but yes. Yeah, so we were okay. watching a little baseball yesterday, but with like the funny faces, like sitting behind the dugout. Gotcha. It's pretty interesting. It is. But, and so, then just watching clips of the Bucks, of course. Yeah, Bucks, they're coming. I know. They they fight fr they're Friday. Friday, okay. but I guess they're already. Nothing really matters for the playoffs because they're already. They're, they're already gonna in. Be held where it's at. Oh really? Think, yes. Oh, I don't know that. Okay. Yeah, and that's, I mean, one kind of interest of the moment topic is on this particular subject is just sort of like they, there's NBA, which is, they're bubbled, right? They live in a bubble. Mm -hmm. So that bubble, here's my understanding of that bubble. That bubble was they got tested at their homes or wherever, the hometowns. The, those that were negative flew down to Orlando, probably tested, mm -hmm. went into their isolation, their, their, um, yeah, they're quarantined, right? They quarantined mm -hmm. for like 14 days. I think they were getting tested through that, and certainly I think they get tested the back end of that. So they're that's pretty. They're pretty bubbly. That's pretty sad. I mean, like this is all like nobody's ever really had to do this in the, in real life. So that's pretty. To me, when I think about it, like that's pretty sound. Like, okay, you're gonna test. Okay, you're negative. There's still a incubation period, so you you might be positive, mm -hmm. but they're not. They're kind of trying to catch people before they are all grouped together and interact. And so, and then I, I would assume they've got a plan if somebody tests positive that they pull right. them out and they blah, 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 so. Yeah, but it seems like they're having, I mean, it's not like they're in this bubble and they can't do anything. Like a lot of the, like bubble life, like they mm -hmm. have these Instagram, you know, hashtag kind of stuff. And it's pretty funny and they seem to be having a lot of fun. Like, yeah. it'd be like going to, somebody described it as like going to summer camp sure. with your buddies right. for like two or three months. Like, it'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, I bet you they're having. I bet you they're having <laughs> some, some, yeah, some fun down there. And then, then MLB though is different. Well, they, yeah, their plan is not does not have a plan, so it's right. kind of like just well, be so responsible. I mean, they, they've gotten testing, but there's no specific quarantine that I know of. Right. Um, and they've got limited travel, so they, they are their games are different on their normal travel schedule. It's bigger teams, like there's more baseball players per team than NBA players. Um, less contact. This is where it's like a little like, well, but it's also outside. Um, you're not in somebody's face when you're playing kind yeah. of a thing. So like, Although they say they're still like high-fiving and giving some ass pats and other sorts <laughs> exactly. of stuff. So it's not exactly not so, contact. Yeah, but it's like, theoretically, I'd say baseball should be kind of low-ish risk, other than when you're in the locker room. On the playing field, right. this is where you can't separate it. Baseball should be kind of better suited than in the NBA, kind of, sort of. I don't know where the NFL is going to fit in, because it's... I don't even know. Do they have any sort of plan? I haven't No. Heard. I don't, I think they've got sort of a half-assed, like, we're going to test, and... Because they're starting training camp, like, right. this week. Right. So, that that's... I mean, I think recipes for problematic situations are, you know, those situations. We get a bunch of guys or gals in living together. That's easy to spread stuff around. Oh, yeah. So, but... Speaking of spreading stuff around, so masks are the topic of the year, mm -hmm. right? Yes, they are. We, we've touched upon this previously. Um, this is not, I'm going to, I rarely do this. We're going to do this specifically. This is, I'm a doctor, you're a doctor, correct? Correct. You, 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 okay. They let you through med school. They did. Yes, <laughs> I did surprising. graduate. I did pass so, my boards. It, it, yes. <laughs> seriously? I didn't know <laughs> that. This is new news to me. So you're yeah. actually, you're board certified Fill in the blank. E and T. E and T. Yeah. Although, don't ask me to run a code because I can't do that <laughs> exactly. anymore. But yes. But so though, when we talk about, so we're both board certified otolaryngologists, so we deal with noses and throats, and that's what we do. Mm -hmm. um, we are we not, are not we are not epidemiologists. We are not epidemiologists. We are not mask experts. Uh, we went to medical school. We we certainly have some knowledge. But when we speak about some of these things. We're not offering you medical advice. Do not take this as the gospel, mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is my point here. But I'd say, I think what might be helpful for the world, uh, in my opinion, is a, is a little bit of forthright, frank talk about masks yeah. and masks in general. Because we, at this point, we're, we're in Wisconsin, that's where we're taping this, and you know the kind of masks have sort of weaved their way in and out of our world, and they're kind of back because our case numbers are up a little bit more. Right. And I think there's some truths, there's some, Truth is relative, and I'd say there's some 
foregone conclusions about masks that ought not to be foregone, and there's some differences between the various types of masks that I think ought to be called out. Yep. And I think that's really our goal today is just to kind of talk through that frankly. Yeah, and there's some inherent contradictions with the different kinds of policies that are out there and then the various masks that people wear. So mm -hmm. I think it's just a matter of discussing what those are and being honest about it. And then, you know, you and I might have differences of opinions about what we need to do to get through a certain time period, or maybe not. So who knows? Let's see where it goes. So you, you first donned a mask in medical school. When, you're talking about like when I first started wearing masks? Yeah. Are you, did you, well, okay, Halloween excluded. Yes. <laughs> Excluding Halloween. I've lived my life wearing a mask, actually. It's a metaphor. <laughs> so, but in medical school, when you went into the OR, you yes. put a mask on. Correct. Correct? Yes. Why? Now, I put on a mask because that's actually to... It is shown to decrease the rate of infection, like surgical site infections. Why? Is that why you put the mask on? I put the mask on in medical school because they told me to put a mask yeah. on, right? Oh, 100%. And, and it did, in my medical school, we never had a mask class. We never sat there, and, and, no, and nobody ever said, oh, you know, we, we wear these surgical masks, and we wear them uh, to keep infection away from patients or keep us away from patients. I, I, it was well, sort I mean, of, I, like, talked around, but I don't know that anybody ever talked about, hey. I remember talking about talking through that. You know, I remember in ENT, and this probably predated, this, this came after you because I don't think robotics was around even when you were, you know. In medical school so when trans oral robotics which is the big surgical robot that did cases in the in the uh, tongue and whatnot through the mouth Korea had like the biggest trial and there was always this discussion around how they still you know didn't wear masks in certain ORs and like because mm -hmm. it's not ubiquitous everywhere not mm -hmm. everybody always wears masks but right. I think there is plenty of data that shows wearing a mask versus not does decrease the rate of infections like post-op infections yeah, I would, I would, I would, it depends. Then I would say, well, it depends on the case, likely. Yes, you mean like a clean versus a non-clean case, yeah, et cetera? Sure, exactly. Sure, sure. Yeah. you know, so that's where, it, so I think there's, there. But, but you would worry if you're a surgeon, if you had your abdomen open and they had a coughing spell with no mask on. I would worry. because I've been conditioned to be concerned about that, not because I have actual absolute rock yeah. solid evidence. Sure. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm think, I guess my point here is that there are foregone conclusions that aren't, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't wear them, but I'm just yeah. saying there are parts of the world pre COVID, and I'm sure even in COVID too, where wearing a mask in the operating room is, is not normal. Or <clears> like <throat> on some of these medical missions, you're reusing masks, which would be, you know, ghastly thing to do here in the U.S. If right, and are, are those places. less, are they less people, are, they, are, they, are, they, are their lives less worthy in, a medical mission than they are here. No, obviously not. You just, right? It's the resources that you have and you Correct. do the best you can. And, and so, and that's what I'd say. That's our reality today in the moment is yep. take the resources you have, you do the best that you can with them, knowing that it, it is not, there is dogma is for fools. And if somebody's sort of handing out dogma, like, you know, cause I've heard this and I've heard masks are, you know, you're a sinner if you don't wear a mask. And then the flip side of you're a sinner if you wear a mask. And I'd say, well, you're probably a sinner period. Doesn't matter if you're, whether, whether you, you specifically not. are a sinner without any doubt. And me too, but it's the mask is, I guess now fast forward to COVID and where we live right now, masking in the current world is trying to decrease the spread of COVID mm -hmm. in, as a society. And early in COVID, it was actually, there was recommendations on high, dogma, masks are bad, don't do them, blah, 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 blah. And, and part of it might have been their actual thought of masks might be harmful. More likely it was a, we don't want to run on masks. We need masks for our medical right. providers. So they wouldn't, they can't tell you that when they're saying that, but that likely is in the back of their head. Oh, I have, why no, they weren't I have no doubt. Products. I think that, you know, and then you can, you know, transparency around that could have both helped and hurt at that time. Because again, it was kind of like seeing where things were heading and if we we're going to have a shortage and then people go run and buy all the masks that are needed right. for healthcare. And that's a challenge, you know? And so people, and, it, and it's created an issue because people are like, well, why did you say this back then? Because now you're saying something else, but also now we have more of a, robust supply of masks and so it, it's a it's a challenge it is a challenge the, the messaging has been a challenge yeah yeah it, it, well it, it is but I'd say um, you know how do you say that it's proof positive of it it's the resources that you have and what are you gonna do with those mm -hmm. resources mm -hmm. 
and um, that's true. And so your dogma has to be sort of shaded with those with those sorts of things. And I think that part of the two in that right now, you know, we're we're you know filming this almost in August here, but basically right now there are many. Um, locales where mask wearing is mandatory, mm -hmm. um, outside and inside, some places inside. I mean, it's kind of a patchwork across the country. Um, I think even there, though, there, there's not all masks are created equal. We've talked about a little bit this, about this in the past. There are various types of masks right. that were designed for different reasons. Um, in my opinion, and this is my personal opinion, a mask that is, the purpose of a mask right now in this pandemic is to keep your respiratory droplets to yourself. And so if, if somebody's trying to wonder what a respiratory droplet is, if you live in a cold environment, you walk outside and you've ever seen your, your breath freeze, those are respiratory droplets. And if you put something over your face, you'll notice that there are fewer respiratory droplets mm -hmm. that are being spewed. So a, anything that's covering your face is going to diminish that. The, the less porous that, that thing is, the 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 less the, the fewer droplets are going to come out of there and the flip side is you know there's something called n95 masks which are very they're not porous at all and they really keep things out n95 masks protect the wearer that's why they were designed they, they weren't designed n95 masks weren't designed to protect the world they were protect were designed to protect you from the world and specifically caustic environments whether it's right. industrial or medical right. um but I had I I have I worn an N95 mask before COVID? I don't know that I ever have. You know, I know I remember getting fit tested in residency as part of a requirement. Oh yeah, maybe you know, did. and so like, but that's it. But like otherwise, you know, unless we were going into a room where a patient had TB or right. some sort of airborne illness that yep. you had to wear an N95 mask, yep. we never did. No, that, and that that would be the the one instance that I think about right. it is, is those folks that were in isolation that you'd have to put the N95 mask on. Right. But, that was rare, that yeah, really rare, exceptionally like rare, yeah. a few times a year, maybe. Um, but now, uh, you know, I think that's where it's tricky is that, okay, N95 sounds, it, it is safe. It's hard to breathe through an N95 mask. Oh, yeah. And so there's there's definitely some some pros and cons there. But I don't, I mean, but, so the various types of masks, I mean, I've got mine. This is my personal favorite. The this sort used of- to, This used to be a stocking. The, 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 <laughs> the, the, the wreaking havoc on the world, right. uh, neck gator, bring it up over your face and- I, the reason I like this is it, it basically I can bring it down like a almost a scarf and then I can pull it up when when I need to. This is not this is not an N95 mask. No, no, not, not even close. But it's trendy because I've seen some of my buddies in California. Them and all their families have a scarf thing that they yeah. can kind of pull. Up, I'm you know? a man of many trends, right? And, and I'm bringing the neck right. gator. Full and if that's force. a Dolce Gabbana, you can get a lot of money. <laughs> uh, believe me, those. believe me. Yes, it's very very. <laughs> yeah. Nasty. So should we go through yeah. and so. This is kind of your typical cloth mask, but kind of multi-layer, all right? And this is like a golf brand, but yes. anyway, all right. true, true links. It does, it does look like would... uh, ladies' underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Did you get that in <laughs> the depends. ladies' lingerie? Uh... Exactly, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Sixth floor, ladies' lingerie. But yeah, lingerie. so right. it's, it's a little bit stringy. So, and then here's your <laughs> typical, this is your typical surgical mask, and this is what we might wear. Ours are a little different, they might tie in the back, but this one's kind of multi ply i guess so know, here on this layer. though those ones are pretty Fibrous. porous right so it's well, easy to breathe through them relatively speaking they're more porous but they're less porous than this and i think the best analogy that i heard most recently is like you know imagine you have multiple chain link fences and you kind of like cross hatch right. them right yep. so rather than just a chain link fence that something can fly through have three or four and kind of offset them mm -hmm. so it just makes things harder to get in and out of yeah right Versus, but it's easier to breathe. I, I'd say it's easier I, to breathe. All, out of all these, I'd say the surgical mask. I don't know about the your lingerie mask, but I'd say <laughs> this mask is pretty easy. I'd say my neck gator is pretty easy. Yeah, I mean it's like breathing. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> this is also like sort of a lingerie ask. Uh, but yes, but yeah, but it, you know, interesting enough, this is probably easier to breathe through than both of these, perhaps, but also more protective because of the way that the mm -hmm. fibers are structured. And then then here's your typical N95 mask, which, you know, it's interesting that like. You could wear this and not be fit tested and have it not function the way that it's supposed to. Right. Or if it's fit tested, which most people aren't being fit tested because we just don't have the capability of doing it. But, mm -hmm. but if it's fit tested, it will, I mean, it's a really tight thing. So coronavirus might be what they call 0.3 microns, whatnot, and this might protect up to 0.5. And so, mm -hmm. again, it has to find the exact way in at that tiny microscopic level, which ain't going to happen really. No. Fast. But I'd say, but even not that I want everybody, if, if, if somebody's not wearing an N95 mask, if somebody is wearing an N95 mask improperly, it's basically defaulting back down to um, surgical mask. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like if you have leakage around it, 
it means you're more vulnerable, but you're still protecting the world uh, right. from your breath. And so I think that's a, a kind of a take home point here is if you are wearing protection, or if you're wearing uh, a covering over your nose and your mouth, then it's it's both protecting you and you're, you're protecting others. Um, I guess that's the really the take. I guess that's the real general, like for the general population, I imagine the idea, and you know, and we've talked about this, is like you're not wearing a mask to protect yourself; it's to protect others. And mm -hmm. I think that's the more global, general concept versus an N D five is going to protect you as much as it's protecting others, I would right. imagine. Yeah, have you heard of the uh, the peeing analogy? You seen <laughs> no, that one? what's the peeing analogy? This is a good. This is the best. The best. Now we're getting into bathroom habits. This is great. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's just pretend that. I'm not wearing pants. Okay. And we're standing up here. <laughs> you have and, no clothes. You're, you're the emperor with, with clothes. Just going back to the lingerie, we're both naked and we're standing here. <laughs> oh, I think I know where this is going. You know where this is going? Yeah. And I just pee. All right. And let's just say we're about this far and I'm, you know, my bladder's full. I just got to pee. Yeah. If I'm not wearing pants, I guess you could be wearing pants, but regardless, for whatever reason, we're both naked and I'm peeing. And the pee, the pee is likely to get on you if I'm talking, yeah. we're having a conversation. Or at least it's going to hit the ground and spray. It's spray because yeah. it, we're both exposed. Okay. Now, now this is going somewhere. Now, if I put pants on, yeah. you're still naked, I think, or you could, whatever you want to do, you could do. But I put pants on. Now I decide to pee. It's possible my pee might splatter on you, yeah. but it's not very likely huh. because I've got protection. This on, is a great right? analogy. Yeah. Now. Now, okay. Now, what's the difference between a man and a woman? That's too complex. Okay. We're talking about me and you, okay? Because then the six feet distance thing doesn't really matter <laughs> so as much me as and you going down the lane. Now, here's the thing. Now, if I, if I have pants on and uh -huh. you have pants on yeah. and I pee, the likelihood of pee, my pee getting on your legs is really hard. This is actually a great analogy. Right? Yeah. So it's and it, it's apropos, but that a mask would be very similar. So yeah. if I am infected and you are not, and I, you know, same thing. If I have a mask on, I'm I'm kind of keeping my infection to myself. It's still possible. If you don't if I have a right. mask on and you don't, can yeah. you get yeah. If we both have masks on, it's pretty darn hard for that to 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 spread, generally speaking. And so I'd say that little peeing analogy, I think, is pretty, pretty. I mean, it's an analogy, so it's not perfect, but I'd say it's pretty. It, Did you come up with it on your own? No, 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 no. That's like okay. a, that's a, I don't know. Like, um, that's a good analogy, though. Facebook, Google, whatever that is. Yeah. It, it, I think it's, it's pretty accurate, and it's honestly as much thought put into that as um, I've ever put into this concept. I think conceptually, I'd say that I think makes some sense. I think the, the other challenge I think that folks have with um, masks, any mask, this mask, that mask, is that it is harder to breathe with a mask on than it's not. And I think it's, you know something I was just talking about um, earlier today is there. This gets back to what we do specifically. So at Advent, we deal with nose and throat issues. We deal with folks who have compromised airways, and we fix those airways to get them back on track. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Putting a mask on, whether, whatever your airway is like, compromises your airway. And so I think many people don't like putting masks on because they don't like to compromise their airway. They don't like to compromise their airway, airway because airway is the most important thing you have as an animal, as a living being. If your airway is compromised, um, you can die. Right. And and so I think there's people don't get that deep when they're thinking about it. But I think a lot of the the kind of blowback against masks comes back to the fact that people don't want to compromise their airway and they don't conceptualize why they don't want to do that. They just know that and when I put a mask on, I don't like it and I feel anxious. And I think there are patients we deal with all the time that have that feeling constantly. And there are other patients we deal with all the time that put a CPAP mask, for instance, on mm -hmm. and have that similar sort of claustrophobic feeling. So long story short, I'd say um, masks and mask wearing is... Um, it's relatively simple, but it's not as simple as it sounds. Um, and I think there's a, a little bit of this out that's out there. I've never heard it pointed to and specifically as, as much as I'm trying to do right now. But th not that it's a bad thing, but I'd say your airways are very important. And if they're compromised, um, it's unnerving. And that's a human reaction. That yeah, way. yeah. I, I, in, you know, and I've seen patients that have talked through that same thing that like I'm already congested. I put the mask on. It's really hard to breathe. Yep. I think that, you know, it's important to probably draw a distinction between that and like, hey, it's proven that your oxygen levels are to decline and it's going to make it, you know, an emergency situation for you. And obviously you and I are in a unique situation are, as are most surgeons or anesthesiologists who have built a career around wearing masks all the time. Mm -hmm. And certainly so we're used to it. Yeah. Um, but 
you know, hopefully this is a short, finite period of time where we can kind of, you know, cohesively gather around kind of an idea and get through it and move on with our lives and do what we can to help ourselves and help others and like be done with this yeah. as fast as we can. Well, kind of thing, hopefully know? so. Yeah, exactly. So, so yep, I guess uh, one final shout out here. I guess we were just named uh, Top Workplace again. This was, we've been, I guess we've been named this a few times by a few different organizations, but this is by the Journal Sentinel. Um, you, you are the dissenting vote, I think. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the one. You're the one admin employee who was like, who, who just right. They said this. it was anonymous, but <laughs> apparently no. Not. We got him. I got your. I yeah. got your. Your big, form is right big here. Big brothers watching. Right here is, is uh, Ethan Handler's. Um, wow, you guilty. Really, yes, guilty. Yes. Well, anyway, right. well, but no, that's, I won't be on adminting episodes here to come. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, if you have liked this, uh, please uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. And uh, give us a shout out, give us a like, uh, and we will be back, back next time. Take care. Have a good one.